And then uh, as a meeting leader, I would like to uh, welcome you all to this uh, Agora speakers event. And uh, today, we, uh, I don't think we have any new participants from last week. No, not that I recognize anyone. But uh, the purpose of Agora is to improve uh, English speaking and add uh, some more fluency to your speeches that you hold. And uh, Agora is a worldwide non-profit organization. And uh, right now, due to some uh, coronavirus related uh, lockdowns and uh, other restrictions, we are meeting uh, over cyberspace instead of in uh, real life. Uh, but uh, I would like to ask everyone to respect the speakers and uh, not to talk when the respective speaker is speaking. So uh, without uh, further ado, I think we should uh, move along. I don't think we have a timer. That role, I think, uh, fell out. So uh, today I will be performing the task of timer, which means that uh, I will just gather supplies real quick. And right now I don't have the opportunity to uh, use a fancy background. Uh, so I will use the green pen once again, it will make a comeback for when you have reached your time limit, the goal of your speech. The yellow pen will represent that you have not talked long enough or that you have talked for too long. And uh, about 30 seconds after the yellow pen arises, if you overstep your time, so to speak. This uh, yellow pen means overtime. And uh, once you have gone 30 seconds above your limit, I will issue the red pen and uh, will also mute your microphone to stop you from uh, speaking. So uh, is everybody ready? Good, then I think we'll jump uh, straight into uh, the first session we have here, which is uh, thought of the day with uh, Uliana. Uh, the, the grammarian first. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Where is my mind? I have to introduce our grammarian first, which is uh, Clara. Yes, hello, how are you? Did you hear me? Yeah, we hear you. Okay, I'm sorry I'm not uh, on camera, but my technician problems continue. <laughs> so, well, uh, thank you, Oscar, for your introducing. Uh, today I will be the grammarian of the meeting. And uh, to explain a little bit, uh, the grammarian is the person who uh, works for language uh, during this meeting and usually provides the word of the day. So I want to uh, to try to use um, that word uh, for everyone in their speeches. And I want to share it. I'm going to share my, my screen. Uh, here. I don't know if you see the. Mm. Are you seeing? Yes. yes. Okay, so the word of the day is adventure. As you can see, there are different meanings for that. Uh, the first one is an unusual and exciting or daring experience. The second one, willingness to try new or rather risky things. The third one, an activity requiring passion and enthusiasm. And the fourth one, to be bold and take chance to dare to live. So some examples 
uh, are, are that. Uh, my trip to Valencia has been full of adventures. Uh, surprising new ideas may spring from such scientific adventure. Reading the narrative allows the reader to enter a world of adventure and passion. And when we have learned to accept ourselves as being all, we can see the aging process for, for what it is, an adventure. Uh, I think they are enough. And um, I hope you enjoy your speeches with that word and that suits everyone. Yeah. Hello? Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, from here, we'll go on to uh, thoughts of the day with uh, Uliana. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Uliana. I want to introduce a little bit of myself because nobody knows maybe you forgot. Uh, I'm from Ukraine. Uh, today I stay uh, at home with my, uh, with my family and we spend time together. Um, I have a topic, uh, thought of the day, and uh, yesterday uh, we also had a very popular uh, holiday uh, in my country, I think not only in my country, uh, in, uh, in the U Europe. Mother's Day, are you celebrate it? Yes, we did. Yes, yes, of course. In Ukraine, we celebrate uh, first week uh, of uh, March, and uh, uh, we have there is a uh, um, very um, um, many performances for mothers uh, because uh, in Ukraine, this uh, this holiday is very popular uh, and uh, everyone wants to congratulate um, her mothers and um, I think um, my mother and another mother wait for this, uh, for this holiday very much because in this uh, holiday um, we express our feelings, uh, our gift for them and uh, they wait uh, wait for it uh, and um, uh, in uh, in facebook and another social network we can see many uh, performance uh, children sing songs for them and um, um, it, it was something special for them uh, especially for me and uh, for, for for my family uh, this holiday is um, um, it, it exists uh, all time and uh, uh, in this day uh, we have a little party uh, my husband and uh, uh, another man uh, give us uh, some presents uh, almost it's flower uh, which we can uh, gather it uh, in our garden and uh, um, my can you hear me Sorry. Yeah. Yes, like, we can do. I think uh, Clara just uh, shared her screen. Uh, no, again. it's not my. It's not my screen. Uh, it's not. No, uh, I'm talking about uh, Clara. Yes. Uh, sorry, I uh, Sagra Maria yeah. and I remind uh, sometimes to the world to use the word. Can I continue? Okay, and um, uh, and uh, uh, this uh, this holiday is very uh, memorized uh, for our family because my mothers, my grandmother, told me that uh, uh, they wait uh, uh, for this holiday, and on this holiday, everyone called to hear and uh, give her presents. But today, I couldn't go to her home uh, myself uh, I um, I have to take delivery and uh, to deliver her some presents uh, because I want uh, to congratulate them and uh, of course um, I want to admit that my sons um, like this holiday because they like uh, to to present uh, present uh, flowers 
and I'm very proud of, the, of them because uh, men have to give uh, every, every woman uh, flowers because we like it. And uh, in this holiday, um, well, I think uh, um, I want to say that uh, maybe uh, uh, we we do it. Uh, or, uh, we um, we will remember about uh, our mothers and grandmothers on on this holiday very much. But I want to. Uh, to tell uh, people that uh, we uh, call for them uh, maybe one 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 time a week and uh, to tell them a very warm word because they wait for it thank you thank you it uh was a little bit difficult to uh, be timer on the first speaker as well I just noticed it wasn't the easiest thing, and uh, you had a very good tempo in your speak. It was uh, really fast. To, yes, there were some you, uh, minor disturbances, uh, for example, uh, when we had the uh, shared screen from another participant. So I think that uh, threw you off the trail a little bit, but uh, you had a very good tempo in your speech. It was very fast. Thank fast-paced. you very much for your compliment. So, uh, yeah, sometimes it was uh, a little bit hard to keep up. For me, actually. Okay, thank you. Oh. Feedback, anyone? <laughs> no one? I can try. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so uh, just because um, in Bulgaria, especially for some reason, uh, the yesterday's holiday is not uh, the same as in the countries around. And it was really interesting for me. Thank you, Lana, for sharing this. I, it was hard to not notice uh, that passion, especially from the point of uh, view of uh, being a mother and. Uh, on one hand and on another hand, uh, respecting her mother and her mother's mother. So it was, uh, it was a great uh, first, it was uh, really informative. It was uh, uh, in, uh, in the right time frame, not too short, not too long. It was great. And yeah, uh, accepting the, The shared screen at some point i think everything else was was really nice and it was interesting for me because of the information provided also thank you thank you i'll say a couple of words as well first of all congratulations for a first speech that was spectacular especially considering that you were reluctant and adamant to give it so well done <laughs> and especially well done because you didn't read it so that's a bonus, if you will. You, you make me shy. <laughs> Why? I, I, can, I, very good speech. I can hide my face if that helps you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, the, the first and foremost thing I would work on is the fluency. And then we can work on the other things. There were minor things here and there, of course. But I will work on having a clear idea of what you want to say and a clear structure. Mm -hmm. Because right now you spoke from your passion, from your heart, but it was a bit disorderly. It was like here, there, a bit, now this, now that. The thing about all the roles, except maybe the improvisational ones, is that they need to be prepared. You shouldn't try to improvise them, at least at the beginning, until until you have enough experience. So that means try to write the speech or maybe not the whole speech, just an outline. And then you just follow your bullet points. But I insist, other than that, well done, impressive. Thank you that you encourage me. <laughs> and uh, your advice is very uh, powerful because uh, in the next time, um, 
maybe I, I, uh, I will do a first, second, the third time. Sure, as they say in English, practice makes perfect. Yes. And I think, uh, Alexander, I think it's uh, speech analysis time on the agenda. Can you hear Yes, me? it's, yeah, sorry, I was looking for the Zoom window <laughs> to unmute myself. Ah. Indeed, today we're going to have two things. Let me, this doesn't count, it's an explanation of the role. Today we're going to do two things that are related to what we call the basic educational path. Up, up until now, we've been doing sections that are all the time the same, like hot questions or language games or, I don't know, timer, grammarian, uh, thought of the day, today we travel too, but these are like accessory sections, in fact. The main sections in a meeting are usually the prepared speeches. The prepared speeches, they follow an educational path. Start for, we start first with the basic educational path and you'll see here that there are 16 projects that need to be done. Jacob will be doing, uh, not the first one, because the first one is for super shy people that are very nervous even to speak without uh, a couple of minutes in front of an audience. So the first project is actually being the timer or the grammar and just providing a report. But starting from the second project, you actually have to do uh, speeches that have particular objectives and the objectives increasing complexity. So, so we start, you start with simple things and then you move on to more complicated things like body language, researching the audience, using presentation software, using microphones, and then even more advanced things like using humor, emotion, and anecdotes. So Jacob will be doing this particular project. And I'm going to do something that is required in many of the other projects. Something like, for example, speech structure, when you do that kind of project, you actually have to do two things in two different meetings. The first of them is a speech analysis. Speech analysis means that you find a speech that you like and you analyze it from a particular viewpoint. In this case, from the particular viewpoint of speech structure. If you are doing the project on vocal variety, for example, you analyze the speech from the viewpoint of vocal variety. It doesn't need to have to be the speech from a celebrity or someone that you ideologically relate to just any speech that you like. And of course the goal is not imitating the person that is speaking, because at the end of the day, there can be only one Obama, there can be only one Ronald Reagan, there can be only one um, Nelson Mandela, there can only be only one, I don't know, Abraham Lincoln. So instead, you just get ideas, but don't forget that you need to develop your own style. So which, speech did I chose? Let me put you some context. I don't know if you recognize this particular image. It's from, anyone remembers? Well, you're all too young here. Yeah, I think it's the Apollo <laughs> Thank you. 11. Sorry? No. I think it's the Apollo 11. Uh, no. Or was it 13? Challenger? Yeah, it was a Challenger disaster oh, in 1986. Yeah. A crew of seven astronauts died, and they died on live television, especially because, and it was especially traumatic because among the astronauts was, were several civilians actually, and one of them was Krista McAuliffe, who was a teacher, so she was supposed to do some direct broadcasts from the Challenger uh, in orbit, and uh, well, a lot of children were watching. So my choice of speech is the, let me make sure that I share my audio as well. So many windows. Okay, here, are, here it is. My choice of speech is the presidential address that Ronald Reagan did immediately after the Challenger disaster. So I'm going to focus on analyzing the structure of the speech, but of course you can always comment some other things and uh, that's what I will be doing as well.
One of the things you need to identify, regardless of your objectives, is what kind of speech it is, whether it's uh, persuasive, whether it's ceremonial, whether, it, whether it's entertaining, whether it's just informative. So let's get started. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd plan to speak to you tonight to report on the State of the Union. But the events of earlier today have led me to change those plans. Today is a day for mourning and remembering. Nancy and I are pained to the core by the tragedy of the Shuttle Challenger. We know we share this pain with all of the people of our country. This is truly a national loss. Nineteen years ago... Here and the introduction, the beginning of the speech as such. I want to draw your attention to the fact that he is speaking basically from a personal viewpoint, not as the president of the United States, but you will see throughout the whole speech, except in the last part, you will see that there is a lot of personal involvement. And it has to be because this is actually a ceremonial speech. It's an ology. It's basically a speech to the memory, to honor the memory of the died, uh, of the astronauts that, they, that died. But also remember, this will change a bit in the, in the later part. And notice how he uses all the time personal pronouns and he draws in his wife. Nancy and I are particularly touched, we, us, etc. And now we start with the first section of the speech that is basically the core message of this first part is that this is a unique tragedy. Listen to it. This is the transition phrase, 19 years ago. So, almost to the day. 19 years ago, almost to the day, we lost three astronauts in a terrible accident on the ground. But we've never lost an astronaut in flight. We've never had a tragedy like this. And perhaps we've forgotten the courage it took for the crew of the shuttle. But they, the Challenger 7, were aware of the dangers but overcame them and did their jobs brilliantly. We mourn seven heroes, Michael Smith, Dick Scobie, Judith Resnick, Ronald McNair, Ellison Onizuka, Gregory Jarvis, and Krista Mikolov. We mourn their loss as a nation together. The families of the seven, we cannot bear as you do the full impact of this tragedy, but we feel the loss and we're thinking about you so very much. Your loved ones were daring and brave, and they had that special grace, that special spirit that says, give me a challenge, and I'll meet it with joy. They had a hunger to explore the universe and discover its truths. Now, this is the transition to the second section of the speech, in which he will basically mention as a core message that we are regardless of all the space exploration that's going on, we are still pioneers. And that progress sometimes comes with a price. And listen especially how he addresses the children because he has to say something given the tragedy they have, they have just experienced. They wished to serve and they did. They served all of us. We've grown used to wonders in this century. It's hard to dazzle us. But for 25 years, the United States space program has been doing just that. We've grown used to the idea of space, and perhaps we forget that we've only just begun. We're still pioneers. They, the members of the Challenger crew, were pioneers. And I want to say something to the school children of America who were watching the live coverage of the shuttle's takeoff. I know it's hard to understand, but sometimes painful things like this happen. It's all part of the process of exploration and discovery. It's all part of taking a chance and expanding man's horizons. The future doesn't belong to the faint-hearted. It belongs to the brave. The Challenger crew was pulling us into the future, and we'll continue to follow them. Now, this is a phrase that acts as a transition to the third and last section of the speech, uh, without counting on the ending, of course. and. Uh, you will see a switch of tone from the fatherly figure, figure that just addressed the children to someone that already speaks as a president of the United States. 
And now the core message of this last picture, last section is, you will hear it said very clearly, that we will continue, that nothing ends here. I've always had great faith in and respect for our space program. And what happened today does nothing to diminish it. We don't hide our space program. We don't keep secrets and cover things up. We do it all up front and in public. That's the way freedom is, and we wouldn't change it for a minute. By the way, a small comment. This particular small segment about we don't keep secrets and all that, I don't know if you recognize it. It's a swipe at the Soviet Union, who at the time was accused of constantly hiding their failures in, the space, in their space program. We'll continue our quest in space. There will be more shuttle flights and more shuttle crews, and yes, more volunteers, more civilians, more teachers in space. Nothing ends here. Our hopes and our journeys continue. I want to add that I wish I could talk to every man and woman who works for NASA or who worked on this mission and tell them your dedication and professionalism have moved and impressed us for decades, and we know of your anguish. We share it. There's a coincidence today. And this is the beginning of the conclusion. You will see two things happening here. First, he uses an, uh, a historic event. So he ties up that with the beginning where he also referred to a historic event, a, lo a loss of astronauts on the ground. You will see that is very, let's say, poetic, the ending, and that he literally gives a mythical status to the astronauts. He embeds them in history, in the grand scheme of things, and he puts them almost, let's say, in the pantheon of people shaping mankind's development. And listen especially to the ending. On this day, 390 years ago, the great explorer Sir Francis Drake died aboard ship off the coast of Panama. In his lifetime, the great frontiers were the oceans, and a historian later said he lived by the sea, died on it, and was buried in it. Well, today, we can say of the Challenger crew, their dedication was, like Drake's, complete. The crew of the Space Shuttle Challenger honored us for the manner in which they lived their lives. We will never forget them, nor the last time we saw them this morning, as they prepared for their journey and waved goodbye and slipped the surly bonds of Earth to touch the face of God. Thank you. This is the end of the speech. I want to draw your attention to something that might not be obvious and that he actually ends up with a quote, but he doesn't mention all the, neither the author nor the source nor anything. It's a, it's a quote from a World War, World War II uh, aviator, uh, John Gillespie, and that's a very famous expression by him. There are a lot of other things that can be said about this speech, especially the somber tone, the pauses, the f warm tone of the and the intonation of the length of the of his voice. That is not necessarily how he usually speaks. If you watch, for example, his Brandenburg speech in front of the uh, Berlin Wall, where he basically made that address, Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall, you will see that he can be quite assertive and with a strong voice. But that's for another kind of speech analysis. For this one, it was just about the structure and it's something that you would need to do as well as you do the, the projects from the educational path. Just one more thing that you need to do in all speech analysis is identify the audience he is addressing. So in this particular case, I think it was clear he was addressing the American nation, but there were several subsets of people that also were addressed. NASA employees, when he, in the first person, we addressed each of them, then children, of course, and finally, the families of the fallen in the first part of the speech, and finally, the Soviet Union with that criticism about their secrecy. So that's it, back to you, Oscar. Yes, thank you. And uh, at least I have been taking a lot of notes during this uh, speech analysis because uh, I think it was really good to see someone more uh, fluent in English than me in Ronald Reagan and uh, to actually 
learn a lot from this speech. So uh, I think it would be good to move on to another speaker who is also on the path to learning, and that is uh, Jacob. He will now share his second project in the basic uh, educational path, I believe. Jacob? Uh, am I audible? Uh, we hear you. Do you hear us? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So, one of the things I really like is to read. And here I am here to say something about my adventurous adventures through to reading. When I was a little child, I had a huge craze for reading. And my father had a small library at my home. And it had some uh, books on not a, it was not a big library, so it was a small library, and it had uh, many books. I was so crazed about reading that I finished all the books in just two or three months. Now I had nothing to read. Then I went, uh, went and uh, started reading the magazines we subscribed to. And I finished that also. Then I started reading all the old, old magazines. It, it, it also finished very quickly. Then I had nothing else to read. The, so I joined the library at my hometown and I started going there. I was so crazy about reading that I, for some days I take a book, come home, read it and return it in the same day, then take another book home. Some days I will stay at the library and read one book and take another one home. You might think I might be exaggerating, but it was a small book, not a big one like an old classic or anything. The main reason because the, uh, I jumped into reading was because we didn't have any mobile phone or cable TV at my family. Once they were introduced, this crazy of reading slowly died, died uh, dying away. The last couple of years, I decided that I had to restart my hobby and I stopped all the distractions like social media and uh, TV, movies, etc. And I, saw, I read around 15 books last year and I'm hoping to do more, read more this year. Now, the most important question you know, I frequently is that why do you read books? You can read ebooks or you can use a Kindle, but why do you prefer the old books? The reason I use books is, in my opinion, books are one of the few things that connects all the five senses. You can feel the paper in our hands. You can smell the uh, smell of the old paper. You can see the words and pictures in the book. You can hear the imaginary dialogues by the characters. And lastly, you can taste the uh, sweet taste of Pringles I eat while reading. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was uh, really good on time, uh, around uh, three minutes. Uh, I don't know if uh, there is uh, some connection issues, but uh, for me at least, I had uh, I had some trouble hearing you sometimes. I think there was some uh, connection issues. Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can. You can hear. You. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Uh, I liked it other than that. It, uh, I think it was really good that you could tie in the five senses as well during book reading. Uh, something I haven't been able to do myself. So I like that a lot very much. And also that we could uh, sort of follow your path from when you were a kid and started reading to when you were growing up and how you learned to focus more to cut out social uh, distractions from social media example, as you mentioned.
Thank you. Uh, can I make a question for Jakob? <laughs> Jacobs, hello. He gave you a thumbs up, I believe. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, uh, I want to say uh, when you when you read uh, when you read more um, more information, uh, maybe do you have some problem when you read something and after that you forgot it uh, 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 and to start to read another one. When you read more information, how, how, how do you, uh, I don't know how to explain, uh, when you read something after that, uh, you don't practice this and you forgot it, uh, and uh, after that you, you read another book, what to do, uh, um, what, what to do that uh, don't, uh, don't forget this book? <laughs> Uh, actually, I don't read that much, uh, you know, fiction books now. I read non-fiction books, and I rarely read fiction books. And right now, actually, I'm reading. Oh, just a moment. I'm reading this one, this book, uh, the, the importance of being Thank earnest by Oscar Wilde. Okay. Uh, this is a book I'm reading. This is a fiction one. Uh, usually, I read non-fiction, so uh, I just note the important points. Well, like uh, for economics, uh, personal finance, and uh, uh, you know public speaking also, and so we can uh, you know I use it in practice also, so I don't forget most of it. And yes, I forget the fiction part, but uh, I read most of the books. Uh, I have a small library myself. Thank you. Were there any other feedback for uh, Jacob? Anyone who would like to give some feedback during this uh, time? Who hasn't said anything yet in this meeting? Tamara? Are you with us? No, maybe not. Jana? Are you with uh, us? Yes. Uh, I really like the speech and um, I especially like the part that he connected it with the uh, personal experience so that uh, the audience can feel more uh, relatable to the story itself. So I think that the construction and uh, I mean the structure of the talk was really well uh, planned. It uh, doesn't appear to be any other feedback right now from other participants. So uh, then we are moving on to the next point in our agenda, which is the prepared speech evaluator, who is uh, Alexander for this evening. Yes, thank you, Oscar. Just as there is a specific description and goals for the project, each of the projects has a specific evaluation sheet. That's why I didn't say anything because the feedback in these cases is not generic, but it's focused and it has to meet particular goals. In fact, in a club meeting, you would deliver a verbal evaluation and then you would fill out this form, which is different, of course, for each project, and give it to the to the speaker. But since we're not meeting physically, I will just go with the questions and answer them. So was the subject of the speech clear? Yes, I think it was perfectly clear. It was about Jacob's passion for reading. Did the speaker provide a background or explanation for those audiences that didn't know the subject beforehand? 
I don't know how much this applies in this, partic this particular case. I think we can, we all know what a book is. We all know what reading is and what benefit it brings, hopefully. It would have been maybe interesting if Jacob had provided a bit of background in terms of what made him yearn so much, uh, what gave th that desire for reading, not just starting that he liked reading, but it's okay. Uh, did you offer reasons for his opinion on the subject? This is the part that I would suggest improving because although it was a description of his reading activities, by the way, one of the, as you can see, Jacob, in the different sections of the speech, he, let's say, pictured different area, different moments from his life. So that's a, a way of ordering the speech using temporal structure. Whereas in the previous speech in Regan structure, it was faceted, different facets of the same problem or of the same aspect. So here I would have liked to hear some opinions about his personal reasons for, for reading or what reading brought, what benefits it gave you. Was there a clear opening body and conclusion? Absolutely, definitely, yes, totally. Was the speech natural? Yes. One thing I missed is that your video was frozen most of the time. It would have been great if we could see you, or at least for me it was frozen. I don't know if the rest shared the same view. Which part of the speech could be improved? As I mentioned, I would have loved to hear a bit more depth on why do you like so much reading and uh, why, what benefits it brought to you. And what, which is the part of the speech that you enjoyed the most? For two thing, two sections actually, the personal story about the library, about reading a book a day and then returning it. And then the last part where you use a lot, very vivid language to describe the experiences, the experience of holding a book, you know, like visual, olfactory, auditory, etc. And in conclusion, I think it was an excellent speech. I would also improve a bit the ending. It was like a bit abrupt. It just stopped. I would suggest a stronger ending. But in terms, other than that, do you believe that the project educational goals were met? Definitely. So congratulations. Yes. Thank you, Alexander, for that uh, very good uh, evaluation. And uh, I don't know if you can see me on my screen, but uh, I have removed my uh, outer shell. So I am uh, preparing for some hot questions right now with uh, Saskia as the master on that uh, particular order of the day. Hello. Do you hear me? Yes, okay. loud and clear. Okay, my name is Sashka. I'm from Skopje. I'm 32 years old. Yeah, just shortly <laughs> introducing. My role, role today is hot question master. I hope that I will challenge you with uh, my question that I prepared. I try to make them realistic. <laughs> Uh, I would like uh, to uh, inform you that um, I will choose someone of you, uh, especially someone who didn't uh, speak today, maybe. And uh, it's not expected to, um, to, it's not expected fully blown uh, answering from you. Uh, just be yourself and uh, be natural. If you need to take your time, take five, ten seconds, to think about the answer. I will start with Stefania. If Stefania is not here, ah, is, she is here. Stefania? The first question. Do you hear me, Stefania? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Uh, who are you? What are your rules at this stage of your life? What are my? Rules, like rules, like life rules, like mother, daughter, okay. something like that. Okay. So my name is Stephanie. I am from Romania. Um, my roles in life right now. I'm I'm 19. Uh, my roles are daughter. Um, 
a sister of a younger brother. Uh, I'm also a student my, I, in my first year. Um, I study management and um, I'm trying to be a good friend with my uh, specific friends and a good colleague. So these are my roles. Yep. Okay. And uh, if you have to choose only one role, what would it be? Um, I think I would choose friend uh, because I can be friend with um, all the persons I said before, like I can be a friend with my mom, I can be a friend with my uh, brother, I can also be friend with my colleagues from, um, from college, and I can be friends with my friends. So yeah, that's the one. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I will continue with Jana. Are you here? Yes. Jana, uh, if you have the su su superpower of uh, invisibility, how would you use it? Mm, um, let me think about that. It's not so realistic, <laughs> but <laughs> I know. <laughs> mm. Do I also have the power to um, uh, move across countries or different places or just being invisible? No, it's okay. You can choose. Um, probably I would go to places where I'm not wanted to be there so that I can see something, but the people that do not want me there cannot see me. I cannot think of something more creative than that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you too. Uh, Uliana? Uliana? Yes, yeah, I am. <laughs> Uliana, uh, can you choose something from your area, from your table, maybe your book, your favorite book or pencil or something near you? And show me. <laughs> yes, <laughs> book. <laughs> okay, could you sell it to Vladimir? <laughs> Do you hear Wait. me? <laughs> yes, yes. Can you repeat one more? Uh, I would like to sell it to Vladimir, and Vladimir, please ask for that you are interested for the book. So I can ask for a discount also. <laughs> uh, 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 where is from Vladimir? It's from Bulgaria. Uh, from Bulgaria, okay. It's um, a special book uh, for my children uh, because uh, uh, he uh, he have uh, se uh, he seven years old and uh, in the time he uh, he doesn't um, tell all um, all words uh, very correctly and I bought this book uh, uh, very um, very very easy to use for my children because in uh, our country in Ukraine we have some. Uh, uh, some some works very uh, complete with him, and uh, I work with him every day. Maybe not every day. I lie. <laughs> uh, sometimes uh, because uh, uh, we have some works. Uh, uh, for example, uh, robot, <laughs> and uh, he couldn't uh, tell this very clearly. And uh, uh, he go to school, uh, and we must do, uh, to do it. Uh, this work, um, work with him, something like that. Okay, sounds interesting. <laughs> I have a tool. Okay. If you will have maybe some some problem with the Ukraine explanation, <laughs> I can help no. you. <laughs> oh, it's an additional service. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That's great. No, I think I understand. Uh, actually, I have a. 
well, it's small son, he's two years old, so I think I I will need such a book at some point just to help him start pronouncing better the word. So what's the price of this one? It sounds strange and interesting. And I, uh, as far as I understand, it's not used very often, so it's quite new. Uh, I want to tell that it's helpful for, for me because as a reason I have some pains to do with my tongue and with my uh, lips, uh, how, how to explain, and uh, I can show you. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm quite sure that I will, I will add. But so, what's the price of the book? How much do I want for it? And the additional service of uh, helping with the pronunciation. Okay, thank you. Actually, uh, yeah, I think I'll buy it. I want uh, just be, uh, not only because of the book itself, but with additional services. Very kind of you. Thank you. I really have some connection problems. Uh, will you finish or? <laughs> I didn't hear. <laughs> yeah. Did, you sell, yeah. did you sell the book? <laughs> yeah, I agreed to buy it just because she she offered me uh, not only the book, but uh, because there are some uh, differences between Bulgarian and Ukrainian in the writing, she offered help in translating and also helping me in explaining how to pronounce the words better so I can transmit this knowledge to, to my son, for example. So uh, besides, besides the good itself, there were a couple of additional services she offered, so anyone will agree. Thank you, Bob. And if I have time, uh, Tamara, are you here? Yes, I'm here, yes. Okay. Uh, could you choose one animal uh, that uh, describe your personality and tell us what is that animal? I can choose only one animal. <laughs> yeah, only one. <laughs> okay. Um, so I choose the cat because uh, when everything is good, I'm like a cat. I'm very, um, I'm very kind <laughs> and I love people <laughs> and so on. And when something is wrong, I uh, can show my, uh, my strict nails. Thank you. Oscar? Yes. You have more time or? <laughs> no, I think you have a few more minutes. I think you can manage one more question. Uh huh, great. Uh, Olga, can you ask Olga? <laughs> sure. Okay, Olga. Uh, if you had to switch your life with someone, who would you choose? Oprah. And why? <laughs> Oprah. <laughs> why? <laughs> oh, I guess it's rather <laughs> interesting and easy question for me. Uh, because last years I think a lot about the meaning and um, it was... Um, something like a depression for me because uh, everything I was doing, I was doing well but uh, I was not happy about it because I was achieving the results in the field uh, that didn't have any value for me. And it was not connected with the common sense of my living or of my existence on this planet in whole. So uh, I started uh, to think a lot, to try uh, to get back to psychology to read, to understand myself, to think about my purposes, meanings. And when I listen to opera, uh, I see an example of probably somebody who has already achieved this. Uh, she earns money, but uh, this is, uh, I would say, uh, the lower level. 
I have already uh, uh, earned some uh, money that are enough for my living, but it's not enough for me to be happy. Uh, I want to follow my heart. I want to follow my sens senses, my meanings, and she does it. And she succeeded in it, in this. And now she is, or for many years, she is already on a level where she can share her experience and her wisdom with others. And she, she shares the ways how to achieve it, how to find yourself in this life. So uh, I hope that uh, I am already on my right way, on my way. And once, maybe I'm not going to be opera, <laughs> but I would like to be useful and fulfill my life, myself and others. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I think we have reached uh, the time limit there for the uh, hot questions for uh, this evening. And uh, right now uh, we don't have the spot for hot questions evaluator uh, assigned to anyone yet. So um, I'm looking uh, for someone who maybe can take on. I, I was assigned for that. Yeah. Oh, it, oh, yeah, for the hot questions master, but we have uh, an evaluator also that is uh, empty right now. But uh, if you would like to stand in for that, I would be very happy. Mm, yes, so um, I would firstly like to start uh, with the question, questions that uh, Sashka asked. So um, all of the questions were very thought provoking and interesting. And I think that um, the people who answered them were very uh, like really liked the questions and were uh, eager to answer them. Um, and uh, I liked the honesty of uh, the people who answered the questions. Uh, and I must say that the, um, I, uh, I was really um, surprised about, uh, for the question that included like both, for, uh, both the participants, uh, Ulyana and Vladimir. Um, because uh, for example, last time I was uh, the hot questions master and I, I didn't think of something like that, like uh, selling a product to another uh, participant of this meeting. So I really liked that part of the questions and overall, all of the questions and answers of the participants. That's it. Can I say something? Yes. So, Yana. Thank you, Yana. Uh, it is only uh, from my work experience because I work as HR and uh, <laughs> We ask often the candidates for, for this part, especially for marketing in hospital. <laughs> if they can sell me some product, so it is suitable candidate for us. Yeah, that's great. So the experience makes like the, um, ha has it on its own contribution to everything as, as like to today's meeting. Thank you. If, right now we are coming up on uh, a very big part of uh, this uh, evening's meeting, which is uh, the colloquium, which will be headed by Alexander. And uh, I think it uh, should be best that he will present it a little bit first. Uh, could you do that for us, Alexander? Yes, thank you, Oscar. In fact, I promised to write a description, but I didn't have the time. So the goal of the colloquium is learning to put forward a position on a serious issue and defend it. So how it works is there will be a number of participants, three, I think, given the time that we have, and each of you will have first a question to put forward an opinion on. You have one minute to form that opinion. And then you will be asked 
either questions or you will try to be disproved by the other participants. So for example, you can change the question once if you're not ready to answer the one that I that you draw randomly. So for example, Vladimir, let's say that who wants to participate? Let's do it on the fly. Oscar. <laughs> okay, Oscar. I will, I will gladly join too. Okay. Sounds Vladimir. interesting. One more. Me too. Who's that? Ah, okay, yeah, no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry, I <Olga>, was faster. <laughs> Next time. <laughs> So let's imagine that we start with Vladimir. I will give him a question, a random question. You can change if you don't like it one time. And then after that, you have one minute to think your position. And you have between two and three minutes to make a statement on it. And then the other participants, um, Jana and uh, Oscar, will have one minute to ask you questions on it. And then you have, again, up to two minutes to respond to defend yourself or your position. And then we will switch. Oscar will be the one having the position. And the rest of you, at the end, theoretically, try to see who defends his viewpoints the best. Did I explain myself more or less? As Oscar is participating, I will be timing. So you don't need to be bothered with that. Thank you. So, Vladimir, Vladimir, give me a number yes. <laughs> from 1 to 30. Oh, <laughs> yeah. 16. Okay, 16. Let me see. Okay, I'll share my screen and uh, I'll also read the question. Should human cloning be legalized or banned? Would you allow human cloning, human cloning couples that cannot have children? Would you allow human cloning for medical reasons? If yes, where well, would you put the line exactly? For which medical condition and diseases? And if no, would you let someone close to you die of a disease that could be cured if with the appropriate donor? Do you like that question? Ooh, sounds serious. Yes, They're I do. serious. Uh, <laughs> I just want to ask you for literally for 10 seconds just to go and grab something to, okay. to write. <laughs> okay. So apparently I'm little. Okay. Just give me a second. W won't count it. <laughs> so Vladimir will have up to one minute after he returns to think and then two to three minutes to state his opinion. And then Oscar and Jana, you will try to argue against it or ask questions to try to refute his, his viewpoint. And he will answer your questions. Where is my zoom? Okay, thanks for the patience. Thank God I got family members close to me, so. Okay. Okay, so time starts, you have one minute to think, and then two to three minutes. Okay, time's up. Two to three minutes to say what you think about it. Okay, well, I think a lot of things, if I must be honest. <laughs> but yes, I would allow it with some conditions, of course, because we are all living in a world where all the good things are invented by human and then hugged by the human or 
their purpose is radically changed again by hmm. by people so i will give this example with alfred nobel who invented the the dynamite just to help the the mining process which was something revolutionary and then some other people with some other ideas started using the dynamite uh, in wars let's say against other people so on the point yes if it would if it was up to me i would i will and i would uh, allow it with uh, under the conditions that it will be allowed only for uh, for medical cases where the the lethal the lethal end is uh, inevitable so when it's life depending and uh, the subject can literally die. Yes, I would do this. Uh, also, I was planning and I'm still planning to have uh, for in every country which accepts this, there will be a huge document, of course, regulating the, the rules under which one or more people can be uh, cloned. Uh, the main body to control this will be uh, from a dedicated medical specialists from all the countries which will accept these regulations and which will uh, which will accept this um, opportunity to save lives and uh, just because in my in my personal experience not my personal experience but uh, with a relative of mine uh, there was a lethal issue, uh, a lethal case, no, not lethal issue, and uh, it was a car accident. Then the the father of the girl, it was a girl and a boy. They were fiancés. There was a car crash. The girl died, and the father, who is living in Spain or in Italy, I would like to, and I don't want to do this, but it was in the other part of uh, Europe. <clears throat> the father requested genetic material from the girl his daughter to clone it and uh, this is something I, I was discussing with my mother it was maybe two or three years ago the, the the father is still insisting to to get this uh, genetic material so he so he can proceed with the cloning apparently he's a specialist in this yes if it was up to me I would allow him but if there is a uh, a medical body an institute or organization which will control this from, uh, it will be constituted only from specialists in the this uh, this part yep, this very interesting the, but the time is over <laughs> oh <Ooh>. yeah <laughs> you're already beyond the time okay so who wants okay. to dispute that Oscar, <laughs> who wants to go first Oscar, Jana? Uh, yeah I'd like to go first actually I do have the um, I do have uh, to uh, actually, because I'm recalling that uh, there were some uh, similar, um, not investigation, but there were some similar questions asked in uh, Sweden some time ago about cloning in some uh, mm. medical papers. And uh, I would argue that uh, cloning should not be allowed other than to clone specific organs, for example, hearts, lungs or maybe liver to be able to transplant organs but uh, to clone an entire person uh, I would believe is uh, too is too stressful on the environment because uh, if people no longer die they just get reborn in their old same state there is no there is no way for the earth to move on then people will probably stay the same and people will not be able to go through a grieving process and people will not be aware of any consequences. Time's up. Sorry, that's good. Time's up. Vladimir, one minute to answer. Okay, yes, I, I do agree with Oscar and uh, this is actually the reason uh, I mentioned that there will be some uh, some organization to to control this not everyone who is uh, about to die for no matter what reason uh, will be uh, eligible to, to choose if, if, if he wants if he or she wants to be uh, cloned or not 
I'm speaking from the for the medical cases when it's inevitable that the death is inevitable and especially maybe at some later stage there will be some uh, age frame let's say not to everyone in the world who do not die just because of afraid of dying uh, will have the option to, to be cloned okay thanks Jana your turn to dispute or ask questions to Vladimir um, okay, so Vladimir only mentioned the positive sides or the benefits of um, human cloning. Uh, but what about the negative ones or the disadvantages about that? Um, do you think that um, cloning can be abused for personal needs uh, or maybe used to produce uh, superhumans uh, with uh, genes that are not um, uh, similar to the genes that the let's say normal humans have so you mentioned that it can it uh, should be uh, controlled by some organization but you didn't um, elaborate it more on that like what what should be um, banned in terms of cloning Okay. okay now this is this is this is a good one uh for sure for sure hmm. yeah for sure there, there will be people and there would be people who will try to abuse the system somehow like every other system which is inevitable as i uh, as i gave the the example with Alfred Alfred Nobel everything is uh invented with positive purpose and uh, positive uh, thought in the head and uh, the same thing afterwards is always um, um, reverted to some other personal for, for negative things and for negative actions so yeah uh, this is a good one and a tough question actually I didn't uh, didn't thought so much, so much from the negative side and still, I come to this uh, this I'm organization. <laughs> While you were praising the question, the time ran out. <laughs> okay, the rest of you that are not participating, write down who you thought was most convincing, convincing, and the things that you liked from anyone. And let's do a rotation. Who wants to go next, defending a viewpoint? Oscar, Jana, who? Um, yeah, I can. Yeah, let's go with Jana. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, Jana, give me a number from 1 to 35 without the 16s. Uh, 4. Okay, 4. Great. I'll remove some of the clues that there are here, actually. And we'll share my screen. And the question is, is parenthood a right? If not every family is allowed to adopt the children, should every family be allowed to have one, naturally? Do you like this question or do you want to change? Um, uh, <laughs> I, I may want to change it. Okay, so give me another number. You uh, may change only once and you cannot go back yes. to the question. <laughs> okay, um, number 14. 14. Okay. So the question is on a similar tune, actually. Should polygamy be legalized? Polygamy meaning multiple marriage, either one man with several women or one woman with several men, is currently illegal in many countries. Why is it so? Should it be legalized? If all partners agree, why should the government regulate the composition of marriage? So you have one minute to think, and then you can say your opinion.
Okay, time's up. So let's hear your viewpoint. Mm, okay, so I think that um, the po polygamy is banned with a reason. So um, not uh, the many countries did that because um, they have reasons uh, for not allowing uh, families with um, more than two uh, parents. So um, I think that we all know the standardized uh, family uh, composition, which is mother, parent, uh, I mean, a mother, father, and a couple of children. But um, that kind of polygamy is not is uh, actually practiced in um, many other countries uh, that, let's say, do not have this um, prohibition, and that. Uh, it's in their culture, for example, the men to have uh, one or uh, I mean two or three uh, wives. So that's normal, let's say, for them. But um, those are still developing countries. And for the de uh, developed countries, um, I think that the government uh, did their uh, did the right way uh, to uh, ban this kind of marriage because. Um, can you imagine like uh, to have um, more than two parents like can you uh, i agree that uh, the lgbtq um, uh, marriages are now um, uh, being a lot being normalized in more and more countries as we uh, enter the 21st century because still it's uh, there are like two parents in the family and not uh, something that for us uh, currently seems uh, abnormal to have um, like, uh, for example, five parents. Um, so uh, I think that maybe uh, two mothers or two fathers uh, or even single mother or single father is more normal than uh, more than two parents. Um, that's it. Um, your microphone is not on. Darn, stupid me. Okay, okay. <laughs> I will say, I will say, okay, well, Emir, your turn to dispute or ask questions. One minute. And, uh, okay, so great speech, if I, if I must be honest. Uh, I have just one, this, uh, just this one question. So, uh, your 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 speech was from the point of view having uh, one mother and one father. Now let's put that aside. Can you imagine that you were born in such a country and such a society when the polygamy is uh, allowed and it's something normal? What would be your point of view towards the, the the countries where the polygamy is not allowed and you have one mother and one father and that's it? Um, okay, so if I were like uh, positioned in that um, case, of course that uh, it would be no it would be normal for me because the culture and uh, the circumstances that I'm living in uh, have influence on me, and I um, I am um, let's say adjusted to them. But uh, of course that now um, we are surrounded with the technology and we can follow. Um, the uh, the development of other countries so i i would know what uh, uh, about uh, i would know the uh, ru uh, the law for polygamy in other countries and i would respect that of course as i do now in like um in the countries that is allowed so of course that i will have the same view as i do now but from the opposite side thank you Okay, Oscar. Uh, yes, uh, just uh, regarding polygamy, I do uh, have uh, some questions. Uh, do you know of uh, any any person, any, any any people, or any couples that have practiced polygamy uh, that have uh, turned out to be a uh, how this call it a uh, well-functioning uh, family uh, or have there been internal struggles within that uh, dynamic of that couples um 
So uh, I do not know personally some uh, families like this, but regarding the fact that uh, in our country, um, even though um, it's uh, we are Macedonians in our country, there are uh, Albanian uh, population that's in big numbers. So um, I think that many, uh, I'm not many, but I have seen uh, families that uh, have, uh, one man and two wives in it but i cannot say how do they function and how uh, what's the dynamic in them so i cannot answer this question right okay thanks jana thanks mm -hmm. everyone oscar your turn you're the last give me a number yes uh, i think we're going with the lucky number nine Okay, lucky number nine. So your question is this one. Should science have limits? Are there any areas of research that should be forbidden? Should science be free to research any kind of knowledge or should it be restricted? Should there be limits on scientific endeavor? If yes, who and by whom would those limits be decided? If no, would you allow publishing in a wide circulation journal of an article explaining how to genetically build smallpox, for example, from scratch, or an article decided, describing a deadly strain of the H1N1 virus? Do you like it? Do you want to change? I like the question. Okay, then I one minute. It. Yeah, one minute to think and then. Yes. Um, till Oscar will uh, respond, I'm just saying that I have to leave. It was a pleasure to be here tonight. And I think I'll be in the next time too. So um, I'm just saying bye for tonight. Okay. Bye bye. Hope to see you next bye. time. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Time's up. Yes, uh, and uh, I do think that uh, science should have some limits. For example, I think it uh, should not be allowed to create smallpox from uh, scratch. I think that uh, it is okay to uh, theorize and to build models from, uh, for example, those um, molecular mo molecular structures that uh, we have and uh, to uh, research some DNA strains, but uh, I do think there are limits and uh, those limits should be in place to not harm the general society of uh, humanity. For example, if uh, there would be someone who actually did create smallpox from scratch, that could very well spread by means of uh, uh, criminality or by means of uh, lack of uh, good containment of the virus itself. So I believe that you should be allowed to research already existing technologies and sciences, but no, we should not uh, awaken already dead viruses to uh, endanger our own species on this planet. Okay, thank you. Who, who wants to ask? Jana, what do you mean? Mm. Okay, let's uh, go I, with Jana. <laughs> okay, uh, I partially agree with you uh, and um, that uh, science should have limits, but uh, we all know that uh, in order to um, uh, develop a certain medicine or a vaccine, we should test it um, either on or animals or on humans. Uh, so um, how do how do you like if you say there are limits, you didn't mention uh, 
to what extent can we um, like prolong those limits? I mean, uh, yeah. And uh, in order to improve human's health, uh, of course, that we should, uh, let's say, lower those limits. So what's your opinion about this? Well, regarding uh, developing vaccines and doing human testing, I, uh, I am all for uh, taking, uh, taking steps toward uh, reassuring everyone that we can create a vaccine for these kinds of viruses. But um, uh, I say that uh, there should, uh, in those cases, be uh, a number of uh, people who are Ask to uh, volunteer for human testing. I know uh, it has been done in uh, some ways before with different diseases, for example, uh, control groups, uh, etc., for uh, medical trials. Uh, that uh, some are given placebo and some are given the real medicine to uh, see just uh, how they uh, respond to the medication or the placebo in regards to the uh, illness. And the same way for sci other science stuff, I believe, because uh, if it's not based on uh, volunteers, then how do we know that those people Hands up. don't... Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Vladimir, you have to ask. Okay, speaking of placebo, and on one hand, and uh, real medicine on another hand, and uh, bearing in mind uh, your point of view that uh, the, we should put some limits and beyond those limits everything should be a theory could you learn a new language without any practice only by learn uh, only by reading it on one hand and on a second hand uh, if you can how you track your progress in this language using the same logic as yours that is a very good question and uh, no uh, it is not possible to learn that language uh, as you are pointing out in your criticism. And uh, yes, I do believe that uh, my logic will put uh, a restriction on what we as humans can achieve. But also I believe it is uh, for the greater good of our species. species. And uh, maybe if uh, we are able to, uh, for example, Elon Musk is working on uh, a space shuttle to Mars. Maybe if we can build habitats outside of Earth, we can try out some of these experiments on other planets with uh, maybe human colonies. For example, cloned colonies. Why not? Uh, to actually try out on some clones to see how they behave, but uh, not in... Uh, you know, in our own faces, but uh, to have some distance to the potential uh, uh, mass uh, lethal uh, works of the science. Okay, yeah, thank you. That was quite dynamic. And I want to hear some opinions from the people that were listening from the sidelines. What do you think? Quickly as well, because we don't have too much time. So let's start, for example, with Olga. What do you think? Who uh, was convincing? Who was? What do you like? Um, um, I would agree more with Vladimir, but uh, to be honest, I got interrupted really a lot because now I was thinking about the whole meetings, <laughs> the whole meeting. So I was not listening too carefully. So I'm really sorry. <laughs> okay, <laughs> it's okay. Uh, what about you, Saska? I was listening, but maybe <laughs> something I didn't uh, understand very well. Um, according to me, uh, the question about cloning was very interesting. And I think that uh, that question has a good defense by Vladimir, I think. Or? Yes. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, I, uh, about Oscar, uh, sorry, but uh, maybe that question I didn't hear carefully. <laughs> okay, it's okay. What about you, Jacob? Yeah. Uh, actually, uh, the contents of this debate is actually interesting. Uh, although it was 
uh, most of them were from uh, controversial topics <laughs> but they were handled very well and uh, yeah the only thing uh, it's not a complaint actually uh, or it's not a what do you say a mistake or anything but uh, i think uh, or just uh, reduce the time because it was uh, too long in my opinion and otherwise the participants did a very good job thank you okay thank you jacob and i want to hear from uh, the lovely lady with uh, the name user <laughs> that hasn't said a word during the whole meeting <laughs> yes hi my name is radika radika yes okay so <laughs> my opinion about the discussion your opinion about who was most convincing <laughs> maybe it was, it was interesting all discussion uh, i don't know what to say <laughs> <laughs> i liked uh, the idea about uh, cloning very much uh, sometimes i didn't agree with the um, this idea about the synthesis so but in general it was uh, good point of view okay thank you radiga and uh, that's all from me we'll tweak the bit the format to make it shorter we will improve as uh, we practice of course as always and back to you oscar thank you yes uh, thank you uh, yes we do have uh, two uh, more uh, points on our agenda for the evening and uh, it will be the listening evaluator who is uh, and the meeting evaluator who is uh, Olga could uh, could you share some uh, points that you have picked up uh, during this evening just for a quick maybe two three minutes do you want Clyde to go first Oscar because I should be the last one I guess yeah Clyde is here so yeah yeah what happened to her uh, oh yeah can you uh, go first then because i know that you are here and you are uh, hearing us right now yeah sure okay let's start with the the format of the meeting uh, we started in time, uh, you started uh, to manage a meeting and to lead the meeting very actively. Uh, and I guess we lost a tempo in the middle a, a little bit, but I do understand that we had uh, new activities. So uh, this is a new experience for us and uh, to be honest, I feel bored at the end of the meetings, or tired, uh, because it lost its tempo. So as Alexander said, we would have uh, to think over the last uh, activity to make it more competing probably. So uh, it's about the whole meeting. Um, let's continue with the roles. Grammarian. Uh, by the way, we didn't have a feedback from the grammarian, <laughs> whether we did well <laughs> with the word adventure or not, but I'll give my uh, feedback as I have a talk. Uh, she explained the role, uh, she showed the word so we can see and understand and read it and understand how to pronounce it correctly. Uh, then she showed us an examples and uh, demonstrated in examples, like explained how to use this word, so it was great. Uh, then uh, Grumerian uh, brought us some, I would say it fun, <laughs> when we got stuck <laughs> on our monitors trying to understand what is going on, why do we see this word again? <laughs> so probably it's a good idea to remind us uh, that we have to use this word. However, it could be good uh, if we were prepared for this. Uh, but in whole, well done. <laughs> uh, the next one role I would like to talk about will be the timer. Well done. 
also it also it was difficult to combine two roles oscar i understand yeah i am still combining those and uh, just for the record i think our three minutes are up okay <laughs> <laughs> good job so and uh, now i will be i'm sorry pain in the ass i will be talking about meeting leader <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, I did like that you played with Oscar. You played with the volume of your voice, with the intonation, uh, intonation, and with the pauses from the beginning. Uh, you reacted with the humor uh, during the whole meetings, so you regulated the process rather clear, clearly. You was giving the feedback to people at the beginning, so it was really nice to see, and it was supportive for people. You were priced with the speakers and you showed your own example, connecting the topic and your own experience. Uh, I felt like if it, the control over the meeting was lost somewhere in the middle, uh, there were pauses and then you came with such uh, very impressive phrases. So um, I was confused with the mismatches of uh, the tempo and uh, emotions. Uh, you manage the time for different activities really well uh, and uh, I also did feel that you lead the meeting, especially in the moment when Sashka uh, ended up with uh, hot questions mm -hmm. uh, and you said, oh, we have some more minutes, you may ask one more question. So in this moment, I really got this feeling that you lead. Uh, and in whole, uh, I did like how you did it. Uh, I know how it can be difficult <laughs> uh, from my own experience. So thank you. Yes, uh, thank you for the uh, feedback on that. Yes, I know that uh, uh, over time as this meeting has progressed, I have gotten uh, more and more involved in the uh, exercises that we have made. and. Uh, mm -hmm. For one time, I was uh, heavily bombarded by uh, uh, questions uh, regarding my uh, limits on science. So uh, I'm sorry if uh, I haven't been able to uh, monitor and moderate this meeting uh, at the end. But uh, I do feel that uh, I will work on these issues that I have. And uh, hopefully I will be back in this role maybe in a couple of weeks when I have built up some more courage and when I have uh, actually done some more talking and uh, when I've gone through some of the other roles. Thank you. And uh, now then, do we have uh, some final words from uh, Alexander? I'd better not to have, not have too many of them because I tend to over speak by time so congratulations it was a great meeting congratulations especially to the meeting leader i like the introduction of agora that you made that's usually forgotten the first time so very thankful and i hope to see you next monday instead of me there are some roles that we do need to have in every meeting but you already know what sections exist so instead of me setting the agenda i'll let people suggest what they wanted to do and we'll create the agenda on the fly so thank you very much and have a nice evening or morning or yes. wherever you are. <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you, everybody, for showing up. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. bye. Have a great one. Thanks, everyone. Bye. See you next Monday.